Welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. Today we're going to talk about Isotope's Ozone 5 Mastering Plugin. I know you audio cats thought I forgot about you, but I didn't. <laughs> I've been really busy with my video projects, and so most of my videos have been about video. So, uh, needless to say, uh, this Ozone tutorial has uh, is long overdue. So let's get right at it. Today is meant to just be a tutorial uh, to give you an overview of the interface. Later this week I hope to do a tutorial on each of the modules um, to go a little bit more in depth. But uh, for those of you who haven't uh, figured their way around Ozone 5 yet, well, let's get started. So right now I have Ableton Live open. Obviously your DAW of choice does not matter as uh, Ozone is going to look the same in each plugin. Uh, not in each plugin, in each DAW. Now, of course, how you load it in each DAW is different. Hopefully, you understand that already. So, it's loaded on my master track, and by default, when you open up the plugin, it shows the preset manager. Um, I don't like that, so I typically uncheck this before closing it. Now, a good thing to note is uh, Isotopes put a lot of good starting points in here. And that's what presets are, are great starting points. Obviously, if you're massing, mastering a track for commercial release, I'm going to click this uh, twirly arrow here and see the genre-specific mastering. If I scroll down, if you're, you're mastering a house track or a hip-hop track, you may click one of these presets, but it's really a good starting point. Obviously, these presets don't work for every single track. They, they have things that need to be tweaked, right? So I'm going to leave a preset open right now. Um, We'll use the hip-hop master, I guess. We'll click on close, um, and let's go over the interface. So first things first, each of the modules here can be selected or brought to the forefront of the, the plugin itself by clicking on these buttons. If I click on one of these buttons and you see that there's kind of a grayish haze uh, to it, that's because it's bypassed. You'll also notice the bypass button blinking here. We can unbypass it either by clicking on this button or alternatively, clicking on the power button next to the particular module that's selected. When we do that, this enables that module, and then we can make some changes, add some settings, etc., etc. We'll notice the down arrow right here is for presets. When we click on this button, this preset is for the specific module that's selected. So right now, I clicked on the drop down arrow next to reverb. These are reverb presets, right? So if I wanted to add something for a small room, I can click on this here click on close, now that's added that preset to this reverb module, right? Next thing you're going to notice, each module has an amount slider. Now what the amount slider does is it controls something, something. I guess that's the best way to put it because each module allows you to control, well, not each module, because some modules can only control one thing with this amount slider. Other modules uh, allow you to make changes. For example, I believe reverb only allows you to apply reverb amount. Um, the equalizer though, if you right click, will have uh, e apply equalizer amount, configure, uh, configure boost and flatten, and configure smoothing. So if you want this amount slider to affect something different, this allows you to pull back or boost that particular um, area. So if we click back here on the EQ, and we drag this uh, slider up, we're basically using the same EQ curve that we had with the preset, but we're pushing it harder. It's keeping its same relational values from band uh, 2, band 3, band 4, band 5, band 6, and 7. Alternatively, if we back down, we're keeping those same similar values and just backing off that initial set of points that we had. This is a good option when you have something dialed into taste and you just want to see how it sounds a little harder or a little less, then you're going to use this slider here. Now if we pull this all the way down, it will flatline and you're not doing any EQ at that point. If you want to reset any of these parameters, uh, hover your mouse over the parameter, click on option on your keyboard and click. When you do so, it resets it back to its default. So now we've talked about the controls here on the main interface for each module. Let's also mention um, these are global settings over here. So this amount slider, first I'm going to make a few modifications to these sliders here. And then I'm going to adjust the amount slider. As you expected, the amount slider is moving everything in relation. So as I drag this up, this is dragging everything up in relation to the points that they were already set. It doesn't increase them 
uh, in an equal fashion. It increases them in a proportional fashion. I guess that's the best way to put it. I'm going to option click on this, set it back to its default. If I want to bring up the global presets window again, I can click on this button here. I'm going to go ahead and close it. If I want to bypass the plugin in its entirety, in a global sense, I can click on bypass here. If you have the advanced version, then this is the meter bridge option, which I'll come back to in a second, which gives you analysis of all different types of meters. It's highly configurable, um, but I'll get back to that in a second. So next thing you're going to notice, this section here that starts with stereo and ends with a question mark, these are your options for each plugin. Um, this options bar stays consistent no matter which uh, button you click on. However, some options are not available depending on what module is selected, right? So for stereo imaging, I cannot pick how I'm going to process this. I cannot pick whether I'm going to process this in a mid-side um, processing or a... Uh, uh, stereo processing. If I click on equalizer, I have stereo, I have mid-side, and we have a new left-right processing. So if we want to process our left channel independently of our right channel, we can do so. We can access the different channels by clicking on either L or R. Same thing when you're in mid-side. If we want to access the mid or the side, we can click on the buttons here. If we want to chain these two together so any changes I make to the mids will apply to the sides, I don't see why you would do that in most sense in most cases, but if you wanted to, you can click on that chain icon right there. Alternative or additionally, if we want to solo the mid uh, channel in the mid side, we can click on the S right here. If we want to bypass it, we click on the B. We can do the same here for the sides. This is a solo just for this particular module. So right now the equalization module is selected. If I click on solo, I disable all the other modules except for equalizer. If I uncheck that, let's say I want to hear everything but the EQ, then I can bypass just the equalizer. Um, next, we have our options window. Our option window is pretty, uh, pretty thick. It's got uh, general spectrum, input, output, and then options for each of the modules. I'm going to close this for now because uh, it's out of the scope of this particular video. Hopefully, we'll get back into that in our next video. Next, I have a history uh, button. This shows all the different things I've done since I've opened the plugin. And if I want to step back um, with some of the changes, this is just like uh, the history feature in other programs. It's a multiple list of undos. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. Next, we have our graph. Our graph shows in order which plugin is being or which module is being processed before the next. So if we wanted to if we wanted to, for example, change where our dynamics are getting uh, applied, maybe we want our dynamics to happen before the reverb, for example. We can break them out of that shared crossover. You'll notice that the dynamics, the exciter, and the stereo imager are the plugins or the modules that have multi-band capabilities. Excuse me. You'll also notice that we can reorder things if we want to move the reverb over here, for example. You have full capability of reordering um, the order in which these modules are processed. I'm going to go ahead and click on Reset to bring it back to its default. I'll go ahead and click on Close. Next thing, if we, uh, I'm sorry, we already went over graph. If we wanted to reset this particular module, again, we're in the equalization module. If we click on Reset, then it's reset this particular uh, module. If we want to access the help feature, we can click on the question mark right there. You'll notice that it brings up uh, your internet browser. Inside your internet browser, it's looking for where this is uh, installed. I'm going to go ahead and minimize that. So uh, all of the help documents reside on your local drive. Next thing, uh, let's talk about our meters over here. So right now, these are the input meters. If I drag one, this being the left, this one being the right, uh, they interact uh, together as one. If I wanted to undo that and then change my left or right uh, channel independently, I can click on this lock right here, and now I can uh, change whether the left or right channel is uh, uh, coming in. Yeah, maybe, maybe the left channel is coming in too hot or the right channel is coming in too hot. I can make those changes here. Typically, you're going to want to leave your left and right um, uh, locked so they're coming out at the same uh, uh, level. 
Next, uh, these two buttons right here are going to change the resolution of your, um, let's see, of your gain meters, right? So if I click on the minus button, I can go from showing uh, up to minus 30 here to minus 50. If I click on it again, I can show up to minus 90. If you're outputting the CD, then uh, minus 90 is about the full dynamic range of uh, what 16 bits can support. So you're not going to see anything like that, anything, uh, or need to see anything more than that. But uh, you can go from minus 30 to minus 90. If you're outputting to, you know, popular music, hip hop, electronica, etc., because the dynamics are so squashed um, with the loudness of wars, then typically you're going to be looking at uh, this resolution because everything is going to be squashed up here and you're going to be trying to get pretty close to zero in most cases anyway. If we click on this button right here, this enables showing our mid side instead of our stereo um, left and right channels. So we can see that right here. If I option click on these uh, levels, I can bring them back to zero. I can click that to, to link them again. Real quick, I'm gonna show you the meter bridge. If you have the advanced uh, version of the plugin, you can open up the meter bridge. And uh, if I press this, well actually I'm gonna have to, I have a track loaded here. Let's see. So you'll notice as I played um, a little portion of, that's one of my tracks, by the way, that I released a long time ago called Tango Me. Um, as I played that track, you'll notice that all of the, the different modules within the meter bridge started dancing and looking all pretty. And So up here we have a spectrogram. Right here we have a, a spectrum. Over here we have our stereo uh, width or stereo mix. And right here we have our levels. Each of these can be configured independently if we click on their buttons here. So if we want to access just the spectrogram, we can click on this right here. And we can change uh, how this is going to look if we want it to display it in 2D or 3D. And then how do we want this to look? So if again, if I press uh, uh, spacebar on my keyboard. If I wanted to freeze it, I could click on freeze. I can go back to this area right here. I can show or hide different portions of this by clicking on one or the other. And the more screen real estate I have, the more I can see. Alternatively, I can click on these handles to show more or less of what's going on in one particular plugin. They dynamically resize, so as I pull this over, you'll notice or as I extend this over, you'll notice more information shows up uh, for my input. And then if I squash it down, it's just showing this right here for my output. Um, let's see. I guess we'll talk about meter taps uh, in a later video. Um, but uh, let's go back over here to the master. We'll bring back up Ozone. It looks like I've gone over the interface more or less. Um, if you want to bring everything back to the default, click on presets here. Scroll back up to the top and click on default. That brings it back to its default state with everything um, bypassed and nothing applied to any of the modules. Guys, I hope you like this uh, tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. And if you like my content, please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Until next time, I'm out.